Now, in around 2003, myself, Brad Downing, and Cornell Jones all had enough of New York City. We left the capital of culture and finance in America, arguably the world, and went to the United Kingdom, specifically London. Now, we continued on this course of street art. You know, we wanted to continue this this forceful agenda of putting our work out wherever and, and in as many we different means as possible. However, keep in mind we had to change our attitude and our approach. You see the yellow vests here? They didn't wear those in New York. So we had to change our, our actual our disguise. We didn't want to come over there with orange vests because we would look a little immediately out of place. On top of that, we had to keep in mind we are Americans that have very distinctive accents, you know? We sound like we come from the movies. Now, uh, American, art, American construction workers don't go over to London to do construction work. So we had to keep in mind not to broadcast our accents, you see? So we had to keep that in mind. But also what this did is this. It changed the imagery by which now we're working. Okay, and I'll give you an example. This work was on in Bristol, England. And this is on a prison. There's a prison here. It's an old abandoned prison, all right? Used to be all kinds of crazy lunatics in there. There's not anymore. So what I did was this. I took a Bobby, you know, a British cop, and put him, put him behind bars on a prison, right? This would have looked a little different if this was in New York. No, no New York cop wears this stuff. If he does, he gets laughed at, all right? So this is immediately our visual iconography is changing now that we're in Britain, okay? Here's another example, another, another kind of example. They have cameras. In, in, in the United States, obviously, but not to the degree that they have in London. I don't know why. They, Big Brother is watching there. You guys have been there before. Have you seen all the cameras? I mean, they have cameras in the toilet bowl. I'm convinced. <laughs> they have cameras everywhere. It doesn't make any sense. So what I did was this. I thought it would be interesting to have one camera pointing to the other, making sure maybe this is, shouldn't be doing that, you see? Or maybe that shouldn't be doing that. I don't know. You know, they're looking at each other, making sure they're doing law-abiding, you know what I'm saying? And there it is in context with the fellow working, walking by it. I also was kind of enthused by the green walking man. We had never seen that before, really. In New York City, for the longest time, it was either walk, don't walk, you know? We didn't have that icon. We actually do now, but we didn't when I, you know, when I was going there, when I was living there. So what I did was this. I thought it would be so funny to have this symbol for walking, actually jump out of that thing and have a, like a kind of an agenda of his own. Like he has, a, he has a place to go just as much as this guy does. You know, he's got to walk somewhere too. You know, he's the walking man. Why can't he have an agenda? Why, why does he have to be in that box all the time? So this is me playing around with iconography that was kind of native to uh, Europe, Western Europe in a way at the time. Now also, you know, when we're here in London, uh, myself and Brad, you know we got to play around with the trains. You know, we did it in New York. We have to manipulate some train signage. So here is an example <laughs> of uh, how we use language differently. We use English English, where in, in New York City, we would just put A-S-S, all right? And I actually did a sketch for this idea in New York City, and it just said, sit your ass down and wait. But now that we're in Britain, it's ours. So, Another thing about public art is this. You have to know where you're putting your public art. You have to know who your audience is for, me, for it to be effective. And also, you know, I'm into the flower thing. I like things blooming, blossoming, showing signs of life. So I play around with what? The, the most uh, common scent part of street furniture in London, which is the Belisha Beacon, which is, I just carved out uh, another ball to make it look like it's in bloom, like it's alive. And also never forgetting the feeling that I have when I was in love. I made a lover beacon, a Casanova, a Don Juan of beacons, you see, <laughs> putting his moves over on, you know, the, the straight kind of, uh, she doesn't, he doesn't look too excited about the kiss, but <laughs> this, one, this one is. And the reason why this works is because there is the context of all these straight ones. And all it takes is a little slight adjustment and the joke is made, you know? This, like about, but just keep in mind, the point is this. I, this would not have worked in, London, in New York City. Why? Because we don't have these. So where I go changes the way I work. Now, myself and Brad Downey, after 
five years of working together, decided we we should part ways. Uh, that's usually how it goes. You know, bands break up. You know, that's just how it goes. So, Brad went to the city of Berlin. I went to back to Brooklyn. Now, keep in mind, back in Brooklyn, I saw the world differently again, because I had been ten years of me running from the police, dressing up like a construction worker, drilling into public and private property, breaking all kinds of rules, right? Ten years of this. And I had been caught relatively few times. I had never been caught with a vest and a hard hat. Never been actually put in jail. I've been put in jail for writing graffiti, all right? Ten years of this, and where could I possibly go other than to jail? If I continue down this route, I think. I thought at the time. So. What I did was this. I figured, what happens if I am thinking with permission? What would happen if I actually asked somebody, could I do something? And go further than asking, but ask for a budget. Then my ideas could expand, right? Because if people are giving you permission and a budget, your ideas can grow. Darius Jones had now become a hindrance to me. It had become something that put me back, you see? I, as Darius Jones, how would I accomplish something like this? A spider on the Brooklyn Bridge, making the Brooklyn Bridge look as if this was wet, spun by a spider, you know? This is an idea that I want to do in the future. So I had to halt myself. I had to say, wait a minute, Darius Jones may be going in the wrong direction now. So I dropped Darius Jones, okay? So I, like I told you at the beginning, I've been through three phases of public art. Now this is the last and, and final phase. There's no more names for me other than the name I have now. So this is what I did. My drawings began to change, and uh, you know, I began to consider what has happened in the United States and the events that have happened, and try to incorporate it into the works of art. This, have you guys been, are you familiar with these steam tubes in New York? They're very, they're very common. So I thought maybe uh, put them in the same position as, as the World Trade Center and have them flowing with the smoke in the same way the, the smoke flowed in uh, the 9-11 event. You see, these are all ideas that I could never do just as a verbs or even a Darius Jones. So my philosophy again changed. What would happen if I now got permission and the budget? You know, what would happen then? Would I do, how my, could I, my ideas change and morph? And not just focus on New York City, but all across the United States. Why can't I play with areas that are rural and don't have any people around them? What would happen if a bunch of power cords began to run off in the desert and let their hair blow in the wind? How would a Darius Jones do this? I'd have to have a lot of people with vests and hard hats and or do it real quickly, you know? So this is the point in my, I'm making. My drawings began to be more advanced than my means as Darius Jones, just like my feelings began to be more advanced than I was as verbs. So you can see this progression in my work, you see? So I had to be more like a politician at this stage, you see. As a public artist, you really have to explain your ideas, like I'm explaining my ideas to you all, and fill out applications and prepare for rejection, you see. As a graffiti artist and street artist, I never had to face rejection. Why? Because I would, if I could get away with it, it was accepted, you see. I never had anyone say, you know, that's not good enough, because I would just do it. Now as a public artist, where I am now, I have to feel, face rejection every single day, it seems. But that doesn't stop me from continuing to draw. And sometimes people do go for your ideas. 